Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Off the Shelf. It is August, happy August. I feel like we're getting through some of the hottest days of summer now and soon it will be fall. I'm very excited, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. We're going to talk about the August theme for our 2021 EAPL reading challenge, which is in the kitchen. Pretty much that means read a book that has something to do with food and you're good to go. Uh, it doesn't have to be centered on a chef or, you know, a restaurant or anything like that. If it is, great, but it doesn't have to be. As long as there's food involved, I think it counts. But I have, um, I think, 10 books to talk about for you here, give you some ideas, places to start. The first one is The Vintage Caper by Peter Mayle, and this is, as you probably guessed, a mystery. Um, about a wine heist, um, a very well-to-do lawyer in LA invites the Los Angeles Times to come and do a profile on his wine collection and his wine cellar. And then he is the victim of a wine heist. So his insurance company brings in um, someone who was a corporate lawyer, but is a wine connoisseur himself and has him track down what happened to this wine and he ends up traveling through France trying to figure out who stood to gain from this heist. Uh, so if you are interested in wine, especially French wine, and you want to take a mysterious trip through France, then definitely give this one a look. Then we have The Hundred Foot Journey. I love the cover of this book uh, by Richard C. Moraes. And you may have seen the movie, it came out several years ago now, uh, but it is the story of a young Indian chef whose family finally settles in um, the French Alps and he decides to open a restaurant. And it's across the street from a very French, like old school, historically French cuisine kind of restaurant. And he's bringing all of these new ideas and influences to his cooking. And that is threatening um, for the, the owner of the French restaurant in a lot of ways. And the fact that his loud, big, boisterous Indian family is there with him in, in this secluded small town in France is also, you know, raising some eyebrows. Um, but it has a lovely message about, you know, just taking that step, getting to know people and, and you know, being able to come together. Um, so if you have not read this book, if you have not seen this movie, I recommend them both, but you're gonna want all kinds of food after you do. So just warning you. And then I have a YA pick for you. This is With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. And it follows a high school senior who has a lot going on in her life. She has a lot of responsibilities. She has a daughter to take care of. She's helping to support her grandmother and she loves to cook. And her high school is offering a new culinary arts program that involves a trip to Spain. And this is her dream, but she knows she shouldn't be even thinking about this. She doesn't have time for this. She can't afford to go to Spain. She's got responsibilities, but her passion for cooking is forcing her to kind of decide what she wants to do with her life. Does she want to just handle her responsibilities or does she want to kind of take that leap? So definitely, definitely a, a good one to check out. You guys know how I feel about YA. If you aren't reading YA already, you absolutely need to start. You can start with this one. This is an awesome one to pick. Um, Elizabeth Acevedo, I think I have, I have mentioned her before, but she is a great, high profile YA author right now. So definitely give this one a shot. Then we have Sourdough by Robin Sloan. And 
this one is, I think, more than it seems. The story centers on a woman who has frequented um, this sort of hole in the wall place where she orders her dinner every night and she's gotten to know the brothers that run it and then there's an issue with their visas and they pack up and just take off but they leave their sourdough starter with her and tell her she needs to nurture it play music for it feed it and then use it to bake bread um and that in itself you're like okay cool great that's a story but then as she's baking bread she's a software engineer which I think plays a part. I haven't read this book, but all the reviews are like, there's something else going on here. Um, but she's a software engineer. She starts baking bread for the company and um, the company chef says, you should take this to the farmer's market. And when she presents it to the farmer's market um, to see about getting a spot, they're a very tight knit, not welcoming group and and she's left going like who are these people what else is going on here um there's there's a whole like secret like black market sort of farmer's market on the side it, it's a whole thing so um someone please read this book and tell me really what's going on because i'm sure that there's more than meets the eye here and I really want to know. I mean, the fact that it looks like the bread is a UFO on the cover, I, that's, I'm already intrigued. So please, somebody read this book and come tell me about it. And we have another mystery here. This is Strawberry Shortcake Murder by Joanne Fluke. And Joanne Fluke has a whole series of food-related, mostly dessert-related mysteries. So if that is your jam and you have not read Joanne Fluke, you need to get started. Uh, like I said, this is Strawberry Shortcake Murder and it takes place in Lake Eden, Minnesota, which has been chosen for a first annual um, dessert bake-off. And the main character, Hannah, is a baker and so she makes her strawberry shortcake and then things go awry. Um, a man is found dead face down in her shortcake, which she takes a little personally. So she decides she's going to investigate this murder, find out what actually happened, because obviously it's murder. He didn't just, you know, fall down and die in her shortcake. Uh, so if that's, like I said, if that's your jam, you need to be reading these books. There are recipes in all of them too. So if you are a baker, that's another reason to read these books. Uh, but they're lots of fun and this this is a well-loved copy of this book so you can tell that it's it's getting a lot of use here at the library and then we have the city baker's guide to country living by louise miller this follows a woman who is a pastry chef in a boston dinner club and one night when she's flambéing her dessert, she manages to flambé the entire building, which is no good. So she knows, you know, her days are numbered now at the dinner club and she takes off. And um, she ends up being offered a job at the Sugar Maple Inn. And she's kind of desperate, so she takes it. And she finds out that the reason that she's been offered this job is because the owner of the inn wants to regain their blue ribbon status for the apple pie contest, the annual apple pie contest. So she's got to, you know, make that work. And she discovers during all of that, of course, the joy of um, baking again and small town living. And, and she has to decide, you know, does she want to discover what it means to belong in this town or does she want to be the world-class pastry chef and that's all she is so if if that's you know the kind of story that you gravitate towards something heartwarming where you you're really discovering yourself and and what you want out of life then this is definitely one to check out i'm just plowing through these today Ooh. 
we have number one Chinese restaurant by Lillian Lee. And this um, follows the owners and um, staff of the Beijing Duck House in Rockville, Maryland, and everything that's going on with them. And, um, you know, ambitions for the restaurant, families kind of falling apart in the wake of those ambitions, the um, staff having, you know, will they, won't they kind of relationships. And then amidst all of that tragedy strikes and it's potentially the end of the Beijing Duck House and everybody has to confront all of these conflicts and where their loyalties lie and, and figure out how they're going to come together and save the restaurant or not. So um, I love the cover of this book and I definitely recommend that you give it a shot if that sounds interesting to you. And then I have Quentin's by Maeve Benchy and Maeve Benchy writes cozies. Um, I Not everyone is familiar with the term cozy mystery and hers aren't mysteries per se they're just kind of cozy and and that's exactly what you're getting you're getting a, a cozy atmosphere a cozy vibe um it's they're just cozy stories really so even when there's conflict at the end of it you're left feeling kind of warm and fuzzy um and there are times when i think we all are going to gravitate towards those sort of books so if you're Finding that that's something you're looking for, I definitely recommend Maeve Benchy for that. Uh, she just leaves you warm and fuzzy. That's that's all there is to it. This book is about a restaurant, Quentin's, and uh, it basically follows the premise, is it possible to tell the story of an entire generation in a city by telling the history of a restaurant? Um, the main character thinks that it is and she wants to film a documentary to do just that because there's just thousands of stories that this restaurant has to tell but of course she uncovers more than she expected and she has to decide if the secrets that she's uncovering should be exposed or if they need to stay hidden so um like I said, if you're looking for something that's going to leave you warm and fuzzy, I Maeve Benchy is your girl. Um, I have not read this one, so I can't tell you if this is one of her cozier ones or if this is a little more straightforward, but if you read it, come back and let me know. I wanna hear all about it. I don't have time to read everything, so I need you guys to be telling me if, if something really struck a chord with you um, because that helps me help you. Now I have two nonfiction books for you. First up is Notes from a Young Black Chef by Kwame Anwalachi. Is that how you say his name? There's a lot of vowels in there. Um, but it follows, it's a memoir, so he is, is writing about his life as a young black chef. Um, by 27, he had competed on Chop Chef, he had worked, he had cooked at the White House, um, and he'd opened and closed his first restaurant. So that's, that's more than I've accomplished, geez. Um, <laughs> but there's a lot going on there and he is a really fascinating person, um, I think in the culinary world and then just sort of in general and his this memoir was made into a movie so definitely give that a look too but i think if you're interested in people and their stories um in general memoirs are going to be up your alley but if you're interested in in chefs and things like that if you've read some of anthony bourdain's books um then i think you're going to enjoy this one because it's it's a good, interesting read. And then one more, a little bit different, is Jello Girls by Ali Robottom. And this is, they're calling it, she's calling it a family history. Uh, this is the story of Ali Robottom's family. Her great, great, great uncle 
bought the patent for Jell-O from its creator in 1899 for $450. I think that was a good deal on his part. Um, but lots of sad, unfortunate things happened in this family after 1899. And as the author's mother um, starts to succumb to the same cancer that killed her own mother, she starts packing up and shipping off history and, and things about the family, family history to Allie and to get her to write a book about it. So Allie's getting all of these things from her mother and um, starting to examine the stories and, and, and what really happened with her own family as the, I mean, I guess as the, as the scions of Jell-O, I feel like that's not the right way to say that. Um, but they're, they're, you know, they're making tons of money on Jell-O. Um, so there, there's a fortune going on there and just a lot, a lot of unfortunate events take place. But if, if you're interested in um, family histories in Jell-O, um, in 20th century history, then definitely give this one a look. Um, I remember checking it out right after it came out because I was like, that sounds really interesting. And I didn't get around to actually reading it. So I'm gonna go back and read it now, I think. Uh, but I don't like jello. I don't like food that jiggles, like it's a texture thing. Um, but yeah, if you like jello <laughs> or history or family history or anything like that, read Jell-O Girls. So that's what I have for you today. Um, like I said, it is August. We are continuing our 2021 EAPL reading challenge. Summer reading has ended. So if you participated in summer reading, awesome. Thank you so much. It was good to have you. If you are looking to continue with the 2021 EAPL reading challenge, please keep reading with us. As always, you don't need to be reading in the order that we're going. You can read in any order you want. You could have started with the December theme and then jumped to March. I, it doesn't matter. We want you to read and we want you to find new things and, and things that you didn't know you loved. So if you are reading along, awesome. If you're not, what's keeping you away? Come and read with us. You can do that on Beanstack through our website or uh, you can come in and get a paper log from the library anytime. If you're looking for more book recommendations, you can always get personalized recommendations from us by filling out a personalized recommendation request form on the off the shelf page of our website. Tell us a little bit about what you like, what you're looking for, and we'll send you back a list of books that we hope you'll enjoy. That's all for today. Until next time, happy reading.